Hello Donuts, today we have collected the most relatable British TikToks and we're gonna react to them. So get yourself comfy and let's get into it. But you're not expecting your friends to run to the door and you haven't prepared for the interaction. <laughs> Sorry, just giving you a bloody motorboat. It's only a small one though. <laughs> Whenever uh, Isaac's TikToks come on my For You page, I instantly like it. It's it's like instantly I just stop what I'm doing. I'm like, what? You once dropped. What's next? I am just here because this fell into my pocket last time I was here. I'm due to return it. What is that a tap? Your is weapon that... of choice against the Red River, my lady. These TikToks are so funny, but they make us feel un so uncomfortable. Imagine if this scenario was re real. Imagine. Like your friend brings back your mom's tampon. How do you even get into that situation? Just leave it, right? Or give it to your own mom. Actually, don't do that. I feel like that would be weird. Here, ma'am. Here's a single tampon. <laughs> I'll let you do that bit yourself. Well, so well. I'll back on my voyage then. <laughs> Um, I don't know about you, but I've never been in this situation. Uh, this might be relatable for a couple of people out there. Uh, hopefully not for too many. Otherwise, that would be alarming. And what does it say about the donuts? It says that, you know, we're a little bit weird over here in this corner of the internet. Are you proud to be British? Oh, God, no. Oh, yeah. good God, no. No, I hate England. This place sucks. Yeah. Oh, how could he say that? Three lions on our chest. <laughs> Are you proud to be British? Let us know in the comments. I feel like I am. Like, wait, if someone asks us if I'm on holiday, like, from another country, where I'm from, am I proud to say the UK? I feel like I'm more proud to say, like, Newcastle. I'm, like, proud of being from Newcastle. I don't know if I'm proud of being from the UK as a whole, though. I don't know. Are you? I feel like I kind of am, because Newcastle's part of the UK, so I guess I am. It's a weird question, though. Is anyone really proud of where they come from? Are they? I, I guess they are. Wait, that's a stupid question. Of course they are. I feel like people from Scotland and Ireland and Wales are more, like, proud of being from there than people from England are from, of being from England. I don't know why I always get that vibe. The weather's awful. The job market's terrible. We get paid terribly. And our accents can be annoying, like Mancunians, Liverpool, A-OK. -okay. Southern accent does my head in. <laughs> There's a lot of people from the south watching this right now just oh bullet damn to me southern people don't really have an accent That's probably me generalizing but I feel like like I just that's just English like an English accent for most of it Like you know some some places I guess do but when I go to London I just feel like that's I think it's because it's been that's what's on TV and that's what's in movies So you're kind of just accustomed to it It's like I find it hard to tell the difference with American accents unless they're like proper southern Texas I feel like the UK's got good accents though. I feel like I like the UK accent. They've got better accents than America for me We're the most obnoxious <laughs> when it comes to holidays and it's just horrible. I think being around Newcastle anyway I like I like I love Newcastle as a city and I'm kind of proud to be around that area. And we've got... Yeah, that's the same as me. I'm kind of proud of my area, but I don't think I'm... I don't know, because it's like, if I say I'm proud of being from from England, it's then that I'm like proud of like Birmingham. I'm not proud of Birmingham. Why would I be proud of Hull? I haven't got any a, a, a attachment to Hull. What, what the f*** even is in Hull? I don't want to say I'm proud of it. I don't know what's going on in Hull. When you live there, you think it's a bit... But like when you go to other places and come back, it's you realise like how nice it actually is. Yeah, I I agree. Like, uh, not you know, London can be like a nice place. But I lived in London for three years, and you know, when I was walking down my local high street there, and I saw a man dragging a machete on the floor, and no one blinked an eyelid, I thought, yeah, I think where I come from isn't actually as bad as I thought. Like, I've seen more machetes in the three years that I lived in London than I have in my entire life living here. London is a mental place. Hi. Hi. Excuse me. Oh, this makes us crazy. Hi. <laughs> oh, Hi. Sorry. Crazy. Look. Um. Oh God. Uh, I know it's not your fault. You're just doing your job. You're just a messenger. Like, I know. Yeah. 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 Can you? Can you? Do it. Can you? Can you? Can you? Can you? Can you? The service is love. That's what you want to say. Spit it out. Why do we all have like an aneurysm when we're trying to like complain? It's like, oh, can I just? Uh, it's like I have that when I take. You know, if I if I buy something in the wrong size and I take it back, I go, can I just? I, 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 can I just, uh, I, you know, I doesn't mind actually, doesn't matter, I'll see you later. Like, for some reason, I feel like the, 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 the person working there will be, like, personally offended when they don't give a f They genuinely don't care. Okay. Just type, someone has shit in my pasta. <laughs> Am I being difficult? I'm sorry, I know you're just a messenger, you're doing a job, you're a waitress. But yeah, there is a big pile of steaming shit on my plate. Is there any way I could get a new one? Thank you, thank you so much. See, if like a chef had a had a had a dump on my plate, I, I genuinely I'd be like, well, uh, can't complain about it. Just gotta just gotta eat my tagliatelle with the.
then I guess. I just genuinely, I can't complain in the restaurant, no matter what. If there was a cockroach in my thing, I'd be like, well, you know, a little bit of ambiance on the side, never hurt anybody, right? A little bit of life. That's what I want with my garlic bread. Like, I, I just can't do it. I, I don't have it in us. You know, some people, they'll bring, like, a dead cockroach and put it in their pasta and then get a free meal. Those are the people I'm like, wow, respect. How do you have the confidence? Oh, she's nice, isn't she? She's good. She's good. Really lovely. Oh. Yeah, I mean, they did sh** on my plate. You just know the, 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 the way our waitress is walking away, like, the f bastards. They should be grateful as a on that plate. Hey go, Isaac, there's your tea. Cheers, man. Thanks for no worries. What is this? What's the tea? What's going on here? Have you noticed anything peculiar with my tea? No, what? The bag's left in! Oh, oh. Down. by the way, Christ, firstly, how has he just put his fingers into that boiling hot tea? Does this man not know pain? Isaac literally just went, bang, there you go. Also, if you are one of them people, I'm sorry about this, if you're one of them people that drinks tea with the tea bag still in, you Weird. Why are you doing that? Calm down! I'm British! We care about our tea here! I'm gonna take it out. No, 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 I'm gonna have to eat the tea bag now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've never actually ate the tea bag, but maybe, you know, that's something I need to try. You know, if someone gives you, like, a, a tea that's, like, too milky, I actually get offended. I genuinely do. If I go around to someone's house and they serve me a tea that is, like, almost white, I'm like, are you. Are you actually fuck? Are, 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 have you seriously just served me that? You've offered us a tea. I've said yes, and you've given me. Really? British. We love the weather here. Mm. We're British. Absolutely every other country in Europe hates us. <laughs> We're British. But nothing like what you see in rom coms. Oh my god, this guy is is broke. So many, so many girls with trust funds hearts. You know what I mean? God, this guy has been. This guy is like Barry Keoghan in Saltburn. He's just taken down one rich girl. At a time. We're British. Our National History Museum is just full of stuff that we stole from other countries. <laughs> We're British. We complain about everything, particularly the government. <laughs> We're British. We invented football, but somehow we are still distinctly average at it. <laughs> We're British. The only culture we have. You know, my favourite thing about this video is they continuously go back to the same spot. Like, they aren't just doing this on their walk. Like, they're like, We're British. We hate everything. We're British. I look like an evil villain. You know what I mean? We're British. We apologise for absolutely everything, even when it's not our fault. Oh, sorry, but we're British. Oh, yeah, I apologise for, like, everything. Even when it's not, like, that's exactly right. Like, even when it's not my fault. Why do we do this? Like, I feel bad. If somebody else, like, the other day, somebody else f***ed something up for us, and I apologised. And I was like, why did, why did I apologise for that? I did nothing wrong, but I felt bad. I was like, oh, well, I mustn't, like, I, I, I was, like, justifying it why, like, I was the issue. Do you do that? Or is that just a me thing? I feel, I don't know. I feel like everything I just treated like it's my fault. And I don't know if that's just something I've been graded with. I don't know if that's a British thing or the way I was brought up. But everything I always just treated like, oh, that must have been... I must have, I must have did something for that to happen. If you were trying to get a British husband one day, here are some things you need to know or learn. The first one, and the most important one, is how to make a cup of tea. And don't come at me like, oh, what sort of tea? Or oh, what do I need to do? If you don't know what someone means when they say, I would like a cup of tea. Oh, don't even, again, I'm getting angry. You know when you ask for a cup of tea and someone gives you Earl Grey tea? Do I look like a f idiot why am i getting earl grey who's who's earl and why was he grey nobody drinks earl grey you'll go to a cafe they're like oh do you want english breakfast or earl grey i'm like does anybody say earl grey cup of tea just refers to english breakfast tea with a tiny bit of milk if it looks like this then you've done something that right. is a good and cup doing of tea. this wrong can have serious consequences that is a good cup of tea. and another important thing to be able to know is just don't be like annoying just don't be like american kind of like oh hey brits in general just like people who aren't too just loud see that's the th that's that's where i kind of mess up that's why i don't know if i'm husband material i don't know i think i've definitely got some issues I, I have to be so like i'm a bit i'm a bit intense do you know what i mean like you meet me i'm a little bit like like i have to hold myself back like like knowingly i have to put like the brakes on we are very quiet calm people we don't say what we mean so you shouldn't do that either Learn to keep your opinions and your feelings to yourself because that's what we do. <laughs> it's actually very healthy to do that. I think that's I think that's just being a guy in Britain. Like, no matter what negativity happens in your life, you tell nobody, you bottle it up and let it consume you. By the way, don't do that guys, but that's that's what we we we, we do by nature. I do that all the time. 
And I'm like, this this original issue wasn't actually that bad, but because I've bottled it up, I now feel terrible. All these things, like, they, I'm actually having a realisation in this video. Why do we do all these things? Is this just a British thing? If you're watching this and you're not from Britain, let me know if any of these things like ingrained in your society. Also guys, if you haven't already, press the subscribe button because we're closing in on 100,000 subscribers and we're so close. Join the door. I love that top. Primark, five pound, five. You look nice. <laughs> Do I? I thought I look like sh to be honest. Nice boots. These. Charity shop, one pound fifty. This. Oh, it's really old. Oh, it's really old. Oh, found it in a bin. Found it in a skip. My hair. Why do we do that as well? Like we always do that. Like someone will compliment my t-shirt, I'll go, Tenner. Tenner. Second hand Facebook marketplace. Tenner. Why do we do that? Like why why is it like a an achievement to get something for really cheap? Like you wouldn't you know if you were wearing like a hundred pound t shirt, you wouldn't go, yeah, it's a hundred pounds. Actually I guess you would if you were like a prick. <laughs> I love how there's like a whole group of people in the UK that all got their sense of humour from Joe Weller. Maybe not your whole sense of humour, but even just the, like, the way you speak. And you can tell within like the first five minutes of meeting someone if they have or not. I'm not going to sit there and lie, that is me half of the time. You may not even like him now, you may not have watched him for years. Yeah, I can tell this guy used to watch Joe Weller just by the way he kind of says some of his words. Like, it's the it's the way like he kind of like... I, I can't even do it, it's the way he says some of his words I can just tell. That's actually so relatable because I started YouTube for, because of Joe Weller. If Joe Weller was never a thing, I probably would have never be doing this right now. The way I started YouTube was I was in college and I was just like, I was kind of, I was just sad. And I was just in college, just like for a year, just kind of training to be a physio. And then this person walked in uh, to college, one of my mates, and he had like a, a drunk on Buxton t-shirt, which is apparently like, it was like Joe Weller merch back in the day. Uh, and I didn't know anything about YouTube at this point. And I was like, what, what the hell? Like, what, what is that t-shirt? Like, it's so, I was like, it's, like, why does it look like that? Not knowing it was Joe Weller, and the guy went, oh, it's this YouTuber I watch called Joe Weller. And I was like, oh, what, what, what's that? And I went home and I searched Joe Weller, and since then was my journey on YouTube. So, like, he literally started this. What is that called? Is that, like, the a butterfly effect? Like, if someone never started something, then this would have... Mental. I thought we could watch a film. What's it about, then? I don't know. I've, I've never seen it before. <laughs> oh, okay. Who's in it? Anyone I know? I don't know. I can... Google it. Oh. <laughs> so is he the dad of Oh my her? god, this is triggering us. This is actually triggering us. I'm like, you know what, love? I don't know. Because I'm watching it just like f***ing you. I don't know. We're two minutes into the movie. Jesus. Just needed to get that off my chest. Thanks. This is like a therapy session for me. You like my therapist, guys. I appreciate it. I don't know. I'm sure we'll find out. I recognised him. He was in EastEnders. <laughs> I can't hear if you keep talking. <laughs> Sorry. Who's he again? The hero? I don't know. Do you think that bloke is going to be the villain? I don't know. And then like, you know, like an awkward like scene comes on and you're like... Uh, I'm... Uh, do you want a cuppa? Uh, Earl Grey our breakfast, English breakfast, yeah? It's always so awkward when like... A scene comes on with your family because they know that you know what, what what's happening and you know they know what's but it's just so awkward especially when it's on for long and like loads of movies i feel like have scenes when they just don't need it like it's just we didn't need to see this 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 was this has no like you could have just alluded to it why did we need to see the guy blowing the girl's back out the bitch the looking at your eye looks so demonic tattooing at your back looks so devilish me why you fly from my blue <laughs> yes, I do. Can you see this? <clears throat> oh, I've literally got them on right now. I have, I must have about 20 pairs of this same sock. This and Adidas. But the Adidas ones are softer. They're just softer. I feel like wearing slippers. The Nike ones are. Oh, I've got Nike ones from like five years ago that, you know, you know, what? like sometimes the Nike socks just go through the wash too many times and then putting them on. God. Oh, God. They feel crusty and not not because of any weird thing, right? It's just because they've been through the wash. It's nothing worse than when you put a crusty dyke sock on, you're like, Ugh. Oh, bang, and the dirt is gone. What a guy. Inspector calls as well. 
Oh, what was, where was that from? Oh, that was GCSE English literature, wasn't it? Did you study that? That was like the one before of Mice and Men. Oh, I can't remember a single thing that happened in it, but I remember doing an inspector calls. Because that was like one of the best things because you got to watch the movie. But then you'd always, you'd always just like watch the first 15 minutes of the movie like 20 times. Hi, everyone. We're the secondhand smokers. <laughs> and this is Dirty Pint Glass. Hi, everyone. We're the rough scrotums, and this is secondhand toothbrush. Hi guys, we're the disowned <laughs> dogs, and this is our new single, S*** on a mattress. <laughs> this guy's actually hilarious, I kind of want to follow up. That is so true though, why does every British indie band, like, like, appear to be working class, are just British indie artists in, in general? Like, you you rarely find one that isn't appearing to be working class, like, it's always like, yeah, man, I grew up homeless. Homeless. I did. I used to have to, to, to have bin wars, just to, just to get a pot noodle as a surprise. Like it's always just like really. I don't know if they're just trying to appeal to us. Is it like only working class people? But I feel like just every single indie band is like this. Hi everyone, with the autistic budgies. <laughs> Hi everyone, with the autistic budgies, and this is Beans on Toast. We are Grandpa's full light, and this is our new album, The Positive Side of Herpes. <laughs> I went to a couple of live shows of this band called Catfish and the Bottleman. This reminds us of them. Kind of gives us 1975 vibes as well. Matty Healy. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, they do all this, but I still like them. I still listen to them. They do always have the most, like, average names. Like, like he said, Beans on Toast. Like, that, genuinely, that could be the band name of an indie band in the UK. And they could do pretty well. Going through some things every British person does. If you're British, there's no way you haven't done this before. So at number one, you're in a public place, you've realised you're walking in the wrong direction, you check your phone, act like you've had an important message and drastically turn around and go in the other direction. Does, is this a British thing or does everyone, surely everyone does this? It's like such main character energy. It's like the audacity of you to think that everybody cares that you change direction. <laughs> I'll be like, oh God, what's everyone going to think of this? Like... I was walking to Primark, now I'm walking back to TGI Fridays, what the- Oh yeah, David, yeah, yeah, about that business deal, yeah, close that, a million, yeah, that's great, a million pound, we'll take that. When you're having a conversation with someone and they accidentally spit on you while talking, but you're too polite to wipe it off and embarrass them, so you just kind of let it sit there on your face. Yeah, I would that's, it's a good job you're behind the camera and this isn't, like, a live show, because I would be spitting on the front row, you'd be sitting there like, do I spit when I talk? I hope not. I guess nobody really knows if they do. I feel like I need a visor in front of us just for a day, just to kind of test it. All right, three, two, one. Yo, <laughs> boy. Yeah, man. Yeah. Got to get the badge and the gender reveal. Come on, what are you saying, bro? Hey, on, bro? Gender reveal on that, come on. Still. Yo, boy. Man, on, bro. Man. It always is in some random park. They always do this. Like, I like the football one where the person kicks it and he fuck, oh, gets in. Hey, stop recording, bro. <laughs> no face, no case. Fuck <laughs> off. If I see this on Facebook, I'll shank you up. <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. Oh, mate, sorry. Do you know where the co op is around here? I'm in a massive rush and I'm a bit lost. Ooh, co op. Don't worry if you don't know, I'll ask someone else, but. It's quite quite urgent. Uh, See the rest of us, we, we don't have the confidence to stop someone. We just kind of just get lost and we'll be there for three hours without asking anyone. You can bet if I, for some reason, if I don't have maps on my phone, like if my phone's dead, I'm just getting lost. I'm not asking a single person. I just can't do it. I don't have the confidence to stop someone. <sighs> oh, that's a tricky one. Uh, <laughs> if you don't know, mate, I'll just ask someone else. It's fine. The thing is with directions as well, I swear, when someone gives me directions or somewhere to go, they say like the first turn, they'll be like, so first off you go left there, right there, straight ahead the next round, and then I'm lost. I'm lost, literally I'm lost at like the first left, like you've, after whatever you're giving us, like I, I genuinely, do you think I can follow in? I have no clue. I'm just trying to figure out which, which is the best way. So go that way, definitely. Yeah, my sat said it's definitely not that way though. That's what I'm trying definitely to. Definitely straight, you don't want to go back on yourself. Okay, right, all right, fair enough. Go that way, probably take a left, I'd say. Okay, yeah. All right, I'll go that way where my sat nav tells me not to go. <laughs> no worries, mate. That's the all thing right. as well, like, you have to go the way they tell you. If they say go that way and then you do, like, a three-point turn and go the other way, then that's, like, rude. 
you have to like at least pursue the way that they've told you even if it's wrong because it's just so embarrassing if you don't you feel like they'll like track you down and kill you london more like fatton we've baked this bulimic into a giant carrot cake this is what nigel uses to get out of bed <laughs> we all like to throw burgers at fat people but have you ever considered the effect that it has on the planet i'm going undercover as a local ute ready to shank up any opposing gang members i might find why why like why was uh, 2000s telly so obsessed with people that were overweight like i could just off the top of my head i could, like i used to watch these with my mom you have like super size versus super skinny which we've made a full main channel video on if you want to watch it fat families which i've also made a main channel video on there was one you know gok wan made one called like do you look good naked or something where he'd like make people lose weight and then stand naked in like a, a storefront, like fully naked. Like it, the shows were mental. Like they, why did they, why were they so obsessed with that? Everything was centered around like overweight people becoming slimmer. 80% of squirrels are now gay. I haven't called my son or his whore mother for seven years. I'm my way to meet the ugliest prostitute in the world. Yeah, I want to see the presenters. You know these passive aggressive presenters that owned these shows who thought they were so amazing, who thought they were above the people that they were making the show on? I want to know what's going on behind closed doors in their lives. They've got a few skeletons in the closet. Why can't someone make a, a, a documentary on them? Let's get back at them. One in three people are gay. I'm not gay, nor am I. Must, Must be, be you. Cindy <laughs> Lauper famously sang, Girls Just Wanna Have these Fun. These are hilarious. Who are these? Boys Gone Wild. Respect. This was this was genuinely very funny. I hope they're doing well. This was a good TikTok. <laughs> anyway, guys, if you would like to see even more relatable British TikToks, why don't you click right here? There's some good ones. Or watch a brand new video where I break down a British TV show on my Cam Kirkham channel right here. Cam Kirkham, baby. <laughs>